So should we talk about um, well, yeah, Aaron, a so sports movie? You, obviously, you're a big sports fan. I've been on your show, which I love. We talked about the Sparks before they lost in the final. One of my favorite episodes, you and I talk in WNBA. Which I could mm-hmm. do. I've said to you, if I like had the money or I build up my own YouTube channel enough, I'm gonna we're gonna do a buy week, the sparks. But yeah, that for <laughs> sure. We're gonna buy the sparks. Yeah. And um but we're gonna uh I would love to do a weekly this week in the W show where we yes. just break it down. Because the thing you and I talked about on your podcast the frustration we have as WNBA fans, there's not enough coverage. Yeah. So I'm just like, I don't know who's injured. I don't know who got traded. Yeah. What the fuck's going on? You yeah. watch a game, you're like, where? Why is she not playing? I have to like comb ESPNW.com right. for any and you any get reports. some weird, vague thing. Yeah. And you're like, God damn it. Yeah. And so like like when I watch the games, part of me is I want that, are, especially the ones that were on ESPN. I'm like, oh, I gotta watch the halftime because at halftime I'm gonna get something. Yeah. About yeah. what else is going on in the yeah. league. But so you're obviously a huge sports fan. What are your favorite sports movies? Um, and well, yes, we're getting season tickets to the Sparks next well, year. That's, mm-hmm. that's, we that's went to a game. Done. I got to say done. this real quick. We went to a game, me, you, um, Trish Sir, who I love and known for years, and Scout Redwood, who I just met that. Durwood. Durwood. Yeah. Ah, we're changing okay. the name. Redwood is her middle name. Network wants to change her name. <laughs> <laughs> Scout Redwood, Durwood. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that was so much fun. So much that fun. That was such a blast. It was game four of the finals. We had such a blast. It was, I mean, they didn't win. We should have. Like, it was it was, It was. was electric because they could have won the whole, the championship. Yeah, we could have saw the trophy ceremony. I have never, and I have been to seven million sporting events, never been at, like, the winning championship game. And I was like, this is it. I've only done that once. I went to the Super Bowl once oh, and nice. saw that happen. And I was like, wow, this yeah. is really cool. But yeah. it, but. A, but a five game series or a seven game yeah. series that was that would be nuts. Yeah. Um, anyway, all right. Anyway, so your favorite uh, sports movie? I would have to say The Natural oh, I love that movie. is is right up there. Um, you know, it, it's because it's it's nostalgic, and also I remember watching it with my parents who are huge baseball fans, and my also my mom's like you know in love with Robert Redford. Who isn't? Uh, just the acting was so good. Kim Basinger, it, that weird plot twist that you never saw coming with yeah. like the the b- silver bullet, or I still don't. I'm still confused by some of that. Um, but that last scene with the sun and the playing, ca- like just t- tears, tears. It's Barry Levinson directed it. It's based on Bernard Malmud's book. Uh, came out in 1984. Literally one of my not just sports movies. Yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, for sure. I saw that in the theater. I remember I went to the movie with my mom and stepdad, uh, and it was so crowded that like I sat alone, and I was like maybe fifteen or something like that, mm-hmm. and was like, I was yeah. It was before assigned seating. Before assigned <laughs> seating, it was at the old Orchard Cinema, which had big comfortable seats way before theater started doing mm-hmm. that. And first of all, the fantasy of it. You know, yeah. the magical bat. Yeah. The music. The, the lightning and the oh. bolts on the, and then the kid is wearing the, bo- like, it's just, it had every, you know, it was, I think it, I watched so much sports that I honestly don't gravitate to a lot of sports movies. Um, but that one to me felt like the best balance of like drama, storytelling and sports, you know, like you didn't have to be a sports fan to love the natural. Right. And I right. love when it gets that, you know, balance. Uh, and of course, a league of their own. I've watched probably seven hundred and ninety. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm in a fantasy baseball league. There's no league. crying in baseball. Uh, it's just you repeat it, and my team is the Rockford Peaches. Like I oh, nice. like have gone so deep. Um, and you know, I know it's a lot of baseball stuff. Well, Hoosiers, obviously Hoosiers. Oh. But the one I literally probably have, that I just cannot turn off is just always Major League. I just <laughs> oh, I I love that movie. I mean. Ball four, ball eight. He has walked the side. Like I just, I think <laughs> well, that was Bob so, Uecker, It's just funny. Who, who was the Milwaukee Brewers uh, announcer? Maybe still is. Uh, so he's hilarious. They just let Bob Euchre be all alone in the booth, just yeah. doing whatever he wants. There's great, there's great stuff in that. But I want to go back to Hoosiers. I put Hoosiers in the natural. Like Hoosiers is, you know, that also has music that. Yeah, makes my I get chills. From and Dennis Quaid, Dennis Quaid, right? De- Dennis. Right. Yeah, Dennis Quaid's character. No, no, no. Uh, right, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper. Oh God, I apologize. 
Dennis Quaid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thoroughly, thoroughly apologize. So Dennis Quaid from time. Family Vacation. Yes, isn't it? that's <laughs> what I meant. He, is, he shows up in a in a camper van. Um, that's, that's Randy that Quaid. That tragic. Randy Quaid. Oh yeah, that yeah, is that Randy Quaid. <laughs> I'm like 0 for 8. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Charlie Sheen's role in Hoosiers (laughs) was... No, but that role I thought was like... The alcoholic dad. The alcoholic dad. And then he's like, you know... And I grew up... Like basketball was like my main sport. You played it in college. Played in college, yeah. And then all these years later, I was performing at the Comedy Attic in Bloomington. And I'm on stage and I'm talking about, uh, you know, Hoosier basketball... Because, you know, I'd watch it for so long. And there was the assistant to the f- a female head coach of the women's <gasps> team was in the crowd. Her name was Julie Force. And she was like, I'll take you on a tour. And I was like, "I'm. this isn't a joke. Like, I will meet you. She picks me up. And we did a tour of the Indiana basketball facility. Oh, I got cool. on the court. It was like full Hoosiers <laughs> movie. It, this was just last year. And I, like, lost my mind. <laughs> that Those kind of things are why being a road comic yeah. is amazing. There's a lot of travel. There's a lot of crap. The bullshit. You when, gotta, we, when is that ever going to happen? What if you amazing. were a salesman? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or you just you just had some job or, oh, yeah. I, I sell pharmaceutical stuff and I'm going to come to your town and I travel a lot. There's no other thing where you're going to be on a stage and people are going to think you're awesome and then go, oh, I'll give you. I remember in Evansville, Indiana, I was living in Chicago and some people took me horseback riding. Yeah. And I was just like, mm-hmm. What? When am I going to just free horse? Oh, we own horses. It's that. I mean, those experiences. People take you out on their boat. Bloomington, especially. We did though. that in, a, I think Blo- we did that in a Tahoe. And like Tahoe take, took, took us out on the boat. Yeah. Um, in Bloomington, though, specifically, that town. Um, so, so Aaron, uh, who listens to this show, they have a gymnastic studio. So mm-hmm. we got to go do gymnastics at their studio. They took me to a vegan so restaurant. Cool. I was talking, when I used to talk about doing martial arts in my act, these these two people were like, oh, we work at a studio. So I would go, anytime I was in Bloomington, I'd go do martial arts with them. It's it's the like, greatest like, town in it's, America, it's, it's is Bloomington. Fantastic. I'm so obsessed with Bloomington, Indiana. And the owners, these two women that own the back door, uh, bar which is a gay bar right across like diagonal i just literally go from there i go i do my shows and i go across the street to back door and there's always like some great show on like i just i then also i'm getting a tour of the the the, 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 the iconic basketball i sang one time the bar next door was like oh there's live band karaoke and i was just like wait what like (laughs) huh the greatest i love you stay in that little downtown square yeah i love it i love it all right so watch Hoosiers, you guys. Oh, yeah. It's a dream. Oh, oh, I'll tell you this. Here's another great sports movie Bloomington moment. Um, when we were at the Limestone Festival, whatever that was, right. three, three or Limestone four years Comedy ago, Comedy Festival, which was fun, it was a blast. I was on. Uh, Doug did a movie interruption. Doug Benson did a movie interruption. He did Breaking Away. He did Breaking Away mm-hmm. in Bloomington. We're at the, yeah. the the crowd went wild. The crowd went wild. The scene in the movie where they in the movie they sing the Indiana fight song, Forget the it. whole crowd joined in, That's and like so I'm awesome. like in tears. <laughs> it was the most charming little midwestern college town moment. Yeah, this it was awesome. That's so. That's cool. Bloomington. You That's know what? I also love real quick American Anthem. <laughs> you remember that <laughs> wow. one? That I was like a sucker for Mitch Gaylord. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the gymnastics. The movie. gymnastics movie. Wow, holds up, holds up. Did you ever watch Jim Cotta? <laughs> no. Oh, that yeah. is. What was what was the tag on that one? Um, God, all right, we're gonna we're gonna Jim Cotta. We're gonna bring that up. That was Kurt Thomas. That came out in 1985. This was the oh the thrill of gymnastics with the kill of karate. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Jim Cotta. Greatest movie, insane, insane. He goes, he's a gym, a karate gymnast. So gymnastics were big in the eighties. So they were like, we got to yeah. get Kurt Thomas in a movie. No, you don't. Right. No, <laughs> no, you don't. No one said you should do that. Not yeah. a good idea. The uh, there's ninjas all over the poster. No ninjas no, in the ninja. movie. No, no ninjas. Mm-hmm. Is it G Y M? G Y M K A T A. Like for gymnastics, then Jim kata. Then kata. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, he goes undercover to a Russian blah, blah, blah prison. Maybe we'll call it mental institution. Um, 
in the you know the classic prison fight where he's in the yard in the courtyard yeah, in the courtyard just happens to be a pommel horse no <laughs> 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 oh, spins around no. and it just Jim Cotta kicking dudes in the face yep all for okay, America that's, that's I'm gonna literally go home and watch that immediately watch Hoosiers you guys and watch Jim Cotta yeah. if you do anything else this that's week that's a palate cleanser that's a <laughs> 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 I shot first. Well, the kid 